I'm John Littlefield, and I'm writing a great book for you. It's entitled, Meet America, Stories of the Great American Culture. For the past several years, I've been flying around America, collecting stories about the ingenuity, energy, and the generosity of the American people. These stories have been taken from my video series, and please watch the following promotional video to get an idea of the theme of the book. These stories are appropriate for all ages, from the veterans of World War II to bedtime stories for the children. John Littlefield, your pilot for Meet America, which is a serial production of exceptional people who define the American culture. And here are just a few. One of our culture's most admirable characteristics is the generosity of its people. And that generosity is no more dramatically indicated than in our production of Angel Flight. I was feeling pretty down about that time, just waiting for the third return of cancer to come. Then, when they wanted me to be in an experimental program with some mystery juice, I didn't know about that, and I said, well, good luck, I don't have the money to get back and forth. That's when the research nurse says, we'll find a way. Little did I know that was angel flight. When you were a baby, you got sick and you had to have chemotherapy? Mm -hmm. You did. Do you remember going to Houston? Mm -hmm. How did we get to Houston? We fly. That's right. And what did we fly in? Mm, an airplane. That's right. Who took us there? I need fly. That's right. Every once in a great while, someone comes on the national scene and does something so dramatic that it grabs the entire country right by the heart and reminds us how fortunate we are to be Americans. And such a man is Moral Worcester, who every year around Christmas time brings 5,000 Christmas wreaths to the Arlington National Cemetery and places those wreaths on the grave sites. It might sound corny, but it's true. Uh, that, uh, you know, without those people, uh, we wouldn't be able to do what we do, or I wouldn't be able to do what I do. And it's just a, really a way of uh, giving back to them what little bit we can, and, and also to maybe spur other people to, uh, to do the same thing, you know. And, and uh, this, we wouldn't be, none of us would have what we have today without, without the veterans. Makes me want to see. Of all the events I've attended, none was more inspirational, enlightening, and upbeat as the one-armed dove hunt. I think uh, the loss of my arm just made me uh, just a better man. And the biggest thing, you know, I think one has to do is accept themselves as an amputee. Once you accept yourself, then everything else will take a little patience, time, and determination. You can do it. I can tell you, I used to be a Olympic swimmer, but I swam in circles. And I told him, I'll, I'll show you how a worm man finally learned to swim in straight lines. Like this. <laughs> Today, I was amazed out there of what will can do in a person's life if you want to do something. That While visiting some old friends in upstate New York, I came upon a most unusual sight. What are these people doing? We started in Hot Springs, Arkansas uh, on June 22nd, 2001. And uh, we're headed right now for Pembroke, Pembroke, Maine. It's up on the main coast just south of Canada. 
and we're going to stop there for about a year and then from there we're going to go down the coast to the Carolinas. We're going to spend the next five years or so seeing the eastern part of this country in Canada. The thing is, it's the journey. You know, if I was to take you up on your offer and say I had decided I'm going to live in the Sierra Nevadas or whatever, I would be a miserable individual because I did not live my dream. You know, I don't know why I've had this planted in me, but it's not for sale, okay? It's not for sale. The people are what make being on the road really worth it. The geography is one thing, but the people, the people are the icing on the cake. The stories of Pete Kliegel from South Dakota, who restores, among other things, famous old World War I airplanes. You had to kill the switch. But if the airplane engine never stopped, it wouldn't start again because the propeller wasn't, wasn't strong enough to move this big mass. So you had to keep it running, blipping it as you descended. And they burned castor oil for oil in it. And when you got it blipped, the castor oil fumes are coming, and you're breathing that stuff. And you know what castor oil does to a person. Well, that's why most rotary engine pilots carried about a flask of brandy with them to counteract the castor oil. And that's the beginning of, the, of alcoholic problems with pilots. <laughs> <laughs> and how about Ellen Paniok, Alaskan, Eskimo, female, bush pilot. This is one very tough lady. I'm walking out on the ice about two miles from Barrow, and uh, kind of a dumb thing to do hunting by myself. But absolutely no noise at all whatsoever, except the crunching of my feet on the ice. It is dead quiet. And I didn't hear anything. I didn't see anything, but I felt a hair in the back of my neck stand up. And I whipped around, and here's this polar bear running, dead full run, right for me. And when I whipped around and looked at that bear, his eyes were looking right into mine. He was predator and prey. He's looking right into my eyes, going, you're mine. And that rifle came down, and I went, pow, right from the hip. I mean, I didn't have time to do anything else. When I shot, I saw a splotch of red right in the middle of his forehead, but he kept running. And I'm sitting there thinking, oh my God, I'm dead, I'm dead. And I'm fumbling with the rifle by now. Bear went running right by me, almost touching me, and about 30 feet behind me just crumpled over dead. So did you eat that polar bear? Best tasting meat I've ever eaten in my life. Now, was that psychological because of it? But do other people agree with that? There's nothing sweeter than the meat of something that was going to eat you. <laughs> <laughs> I remember that. <laughs> and here are just some of our other 15 productions that we have available. Please contact me at the web address shown on your screen to place your name on an early order list for a signed first edition copy of Meet America, Stories of the Great American Culture.